Hoi hoi, it's Lewis again and for this video I'm going to be doing the reader type capsule challenge or tag I believe but <laughs> whatever it is I found this from Jesse the reader and I was like hmm this is a very interesting one why not film a video like this and because I was like thinking of concepts of like what videos to film so Hmm, I thought about this pretty fun one, so thank you Jesse for doing this, and I was like, hmm, great video idea, so let's begin, hoorah! It would be The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Now I have to say that it had so much impact for me because I'm again at the time of my life that I'm thinking about what am I going to be doing next. Like, you know, I'm kind of upfront about the fact that I became a content creator because I love to perform and hopefully one day this would be something that not only that I would enjoy doing but also I would be earning. Like, it's kind of like, you know, the vocation that I want to pursue at some point in my life and I feel like I'm able to do that right now with BookTube and even as a bookish streamer as well. Um, I'm just hoping like it would be something that I could be doing and although there are things like lately that I'm like thinking like as a performer where do I want to go, do I want to do this, do I want to go hosting, do I want to be an idol, do I want to be a singer, performer whatsoever and I feel like this book came at like at the time that I felt like I needed it because um, I think I mentioned this in my vlog but either way um, I have a really good vlog by the way of the Midnight Library and I was having some existential crisis at the time that I was reading this because there are times wherein I'm still figuring out like where am I gonna go and I feel like you know there are times wherein I felt like I have yet to do more things I have yet to make an impact so I felt like it came at the right time you know I felt I was feeling the situation with the character here Nora and I was just so amazed or like I was so immersed in the story just because the thought process that was happening here was actually what was going on in my mind and it wasn't it was just quite recently that I read it I read it in around January until like mid-February if I'm not mistaken so I felt like it was just you know quite recent that I you know read it so yeah again the Midnight Library pretty much what I said in the previous clip and the previous prompt those are the reasons why I love this book and it's like a recent read that I really love I really enjoy reading like books with switcheroo tropes. Now what is a switcheroo trope? Basically it's like two or more people kind of like switching each other, you know, each other. Like those Tories kind of like Freaky Friday, like um, those people that are kind of like switching from one body to another. And I really enjoy reading those kind of tropes because it kind of gives you more of a a different kind of exploration about another character situation and that's what I really love about it and kind of like one of those things that sort of gives it's the way that they describe a characterization or a situation of another character is in a manner where it's more of like there's an eye opener like honestly for me if I were to write a book I want to write a book wherein the fanboy and then like the idol kind of like switches and then like the fanboy gets to know more about what it's like to be a limelight. I've yet to read a book like that. I definitely want to read more about that. The closest, sorry, got tongue tied. The closest one that I read would have to be uh, *The Princess and the Fangirl* because this follows the story of like the uh, fangirl and she gets to be the actress for like quite some time because you know the actress is trying to resolve an issue about like looking for that like script that was like thrown away and who leaked it she was trying to figure out like who leaked it and all that uh, and they were able to like switch because they looked so much alike and i really like how you know the actress was able to understand why fans are amazed by her 
um, like her character, you know, how she brings smiles to these people, how she brings hope. I really love that part of the book. And also another classic, well, another book, which is a classic that I, you know, like that has this term, of course, is where, you know, Princess and the Fangirl was based from, which is The Prince and the Pauper. So this follows the story of like two boys that were born on the exact, like, same date. And they look alike, but they're not like related by blood or anything. And then one day they meet each other and they decide to like switch the prince decide to become a pauper and the pauper becomes a prince. While the pauper lives like the lavish lifestyle of the prince, you know, the prince gets to know more about the situation of his constituents, you know, by living as a pauper. And, you know, at least in the part of the prince, a lot of things like open his mind, you know, um, which is really wonderful. Like that's the whole point about these retreat trips. It gets you to, you know, um, sort of. I don't know. It has a different kind of vibe when there's somebody else who's like stepping on that person's shoe, and they get to realize what it's actually like to be in another person's shoes. Is like there's like more than what meets the eye. So that's why I love reading about um, like switcheroo tropes, basically. To me, this is kind of like a deep or for some people it might be a sensitive topic, but I'd love for this topic to be discussed a lot more, especially with like adult books. And that would be existential crisis, you know, basically I would love for more books to talk about this, like what people really want, you know, the direction of, where, you know, one's direction in life, where do they want to go and all that stuff. You know what their purpose is basically those are the things that i want to read more and hopefully see more in books just kind of like in the midnight library i'd love to like read different like perspectives about you know one's goals one's achievements purpose like meaning of life basically in a more fictional approach i think that would be really lovely to see more in books you know and Coming from different cultures, I believe, that would be really amazing if we get to see like existential crisis in a more oriental kind of perspective or coming from say, um, you know, the, uh, what you call this, the South Asian perspective, you know, like, for example, like, even at, the, at a certain stage in their lives, like, you know, how there are still people that are still trying to find meaning to their, to their lives or say, still don't know which direction or which path they will take and how, you know, this would, you know, should be tackled and that it could spark discussions as well about, you know, how to move your life to your own pace and how to accept, you know, um, the process that you will be a part of because everybody has like their own paces basically and it would be great to sort of see other stories where you kind of can relate I guess or can understand or just simply like read and okay that's a very interesting point maybe somebody else experiencing this one I may not necessarily be in that place but please it's a way to sort of empathize if that makes any sense kind of like the Midnight Library I really am amazed I'm so happy that I read the Midnight Library by Matt Hay. middle grade fantasy books because they are just so pure and I'm going to show you a couple of my recent favorites and they are both like sequels. It would be, or they would be I should say, Moi Moi Lulun Boy, Anglo Awala Mbertud and Arusha and the Song of Death. Now this one is by Segundo Matias Jr. and this one is by Rashi Chakshi. They both are of Filipino descent. Well, of course, Segundo Matias is pure Filipino and Rashi Chashi is Indian Filipino American. Physical copies of books. It's not a brown one, and I haven't used this one, and it would be this one, um, 
the Adora the Explorer bookmark. Now, I remember buying this one. You know, they used to sell, like, National Bookstore used to sell, like, bookmarks, and they had, like, these, like, cute little things. And ooh, the strand part of it, if it's a little brownish already, <laughs> but yeah. I kind of cute, and I haven't used this one. Hmm, I think it's hard because I'm really happy with like all the videos that I'm filming, but I really enjoy filming my bookstore vlogs, and because I'm able to showcase what it's like to be like a bookworm in the Philippines, what it's like to shop for books like in physical stores in the Philippines. So yeah, those are some of my favorite like videos. I see that this reading year, specifically 2023 reading year, would be challenging because I am juggling reading with vlogging, streaming, fanboying, as well as having a full-time job. Yes, I am juggling a lot of things and time management is something that I'm working on a lot and something that I thought about when I, you know, decided to go and really push through not only with vlogging but also with streaming and Kumu. So yeah, time management I guess is going to be the key and you know some inspiration from other folks as well. And surprisingly, I already read seven books this year, which is quite a lot for somebody like me who usually reads like 14 to like less than 20 books a year. I am proud, you know, filming my video about my favorite like booktube channels like the uh, top tier booktubers according to Lucity just because I felt like I was able to showcase on only like those who are known but also you know some you know booktubers or youtubers that I believe that deserve more attention so I'm so happy so satisfied and proud of filming and uploading that one let me know down in the comment section below what is your recent favorite book that you read and if you've made it this far leave a racing fist emoji and i hope you folks like this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up also click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon somewhere down there to keep yourselves posted about my videos and also put down links and handles on my social media accounts so feel free to check me out and follow me there as well as always thank you so much for watching Always be thankful and unleash the reader in you. Bye y'all.